everybody, Zach again, NewTutorial.com, coming in, making a video for you today. And so today we're going to talk about grace and mercy. You know, uh, I got a, I got an email from, or a message or text or something from uh, someone, I think it was on Facebook, and they had mentioned, you know, someone that they were talking to is like, you know what, I just don't see enough talk about grace. I see all this talk about law, you know, all the law, 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 but I don't see any grace. I don't see any mercy. Where's all the grace at? And this is something that comes up quite a bit. And so I do get these emails from time to time. Zach, you know, or, or even comments in the YouTube you know, section, uh, the comment section there on YouTube. Zach, you know what? Your videos are great, but you know what? You're just talking way too much about the law. I don't see anything about grace. Where's the grace, Zach? Come on. We need more grace. Talk about the grace. See, I am talking about the grace. That's the Torah. You see, it's like putting the cart before the horse. And, and this is not talking about works-based salvation. Those who are saved will show their salvation by their works. It's not those who work are saved. No, those who are saved will show works that provide proof of that salvation. Whenever this topic comes up, I am quick to go to one place and one place only. There's lots of places in the Bible you can go to about this topic. But the place that really shines the world's brightest spotlight on this topic is one place and one place only, Psalms 103. Psalms 103. And today we're going to read Psalms 103. So I hope you open your Bible. Stop the video if you haven't already. Stop the video. Go get your Bible because we're going to read this. And I want you to remember the next time someone says, you know what, I know you're into this whole law thing, but I don't want you to forget grace because grace is where is what's really important. Mercy and grace. We need grace and mercy. That needs to be the forefront of our Christian belief walk. Okay, great. Let's go talk about that. Stop the video, get your Bible, go to Psalms 103, and come back. Three, two, one. We're back. So, here we go. Psalms 103, let's get into it. Starting at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my... And, and for those of you who are getting all wigged out, because I am not using Yahweh or Yehovah or Yahuwah or whatever version you subscribe to, calm down, okay? I'm just going by what the King James says to kind of keep it all even keel. I know some people will get mad just because I'm using the King James, but just stick with me here. Let's concentrate. Okay, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Yes, we love talking about forgiveness. Who heals all thy diseases. We love talking about healing. Who redeems thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's something we love to talk about in the Christian church is loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that they, thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. We love we love it when the underdog finally gets his, right? So that, that verse just goes right along with that. Uh, number seven, verse seven. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities that them that fear him. Verse 14. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as a grass, a flower of the field. So he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. Now, up to this point... This, um, this is something that the Sunday crowd will eat up, you know, with a giant spoon. Because it's talking about mercies and loving kindness and mercies from everlasting to everlasting and gracious forgiveness and all these things that we love to talk about and we love to think that the Father views us with. We love these things. They, they tickle the ear. Except when you get to the next verse. What's it say? 
Verse 18, to such as keep his covenant, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. How dare you? You see, that's not such an easy verse. Because all of these things he's just described, his tender mercies, his forgiveness, his healings, all of these things are to those who keep his covenant and his commandments and remember to do them. Mm. Mm. That's a hard one to pass. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it. I know because that requires something on your part. We love it when things are just given to us, especially in America. America is this whole welfare state right now. And anything you give me for free, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's, that's the American dream. That's the Western world dream. Give me, give me, give me. I don't have to do anything. Just give me. Bernie Sanders is, and, and Pocahontas is going to give me everything I ever, ever wanted in life. And I don't have to do anything because I'm entitled because I deserve it. But see, this is saying, hey, this is something that's for these people. It's not for everyone. It's for those who keep his covenant and his commandments and remember to do them. That's a harder sell on Sunday morning. Oh yeah, we don't like that at all. And so whenever the topic comes up on grace, on mercy. And Zach, you're not teaching enough about grace. I hate that word, teaching. You're not talking about grace enough on your videos or mercies and God's tender mercies. Well, I go to this one right here. This is what I send him every single time. And there's lots of other things you can go to, you can talk about, you know, in the Bible that show the same thought process. But this one spells it out so good. And I remember I first learned this. I was brand new to this walk. I had just come out of the Christian church and I decided to go to a Christian church down the road. I said, you know, I told, told Jamie, I said, I just want to go check it out. And I went there and this is what they talked about that day. They talked about Psalms 103 and he stopped at verse 17. He did not say, he did not repeat in front of the audience, verse 18. He read this entire chapter, went verse by verse and then stopped and expounded on it you know, for about 10 or 15 minutes here and there. I mean, it took him a whole, you know, 40 minutes to go through this first 17 verses. But then he stopped. He never read verse 18. Keep going. Who are these mercies and graciousness, loving kindness and healings for? I mean, you say, Zach, you know, your, your wife just passed away from cancer. How come this didn't happen to you? You know what? It's appointed once for every man to die. You don't get a chance to, to determine when that time is. That's an appointment that you're going to keep. I think I'm going to do a video on that at some, at some point too. You don't, get to, you don't get to determine when that appointment is kept, but you're going to get that appointment. It's appointed once for man to die. Well, if that's the case, it's what is it going to be afterwards? Are you going to die a second death, which the Bible clearly speaks of? Or are you healed? Are you healed from here on out? My wife is healed. She doesn't have cancer anymore. She's in a very good place, and she's not even my wife anymore. She is, you know, that ceases at death. The Bible speaks clearly of that all throughout the Torah and the Old New Testament. She has, has, she has no concerns, no worries anymore. All of that, all of the tears have been wiped from her eyes. She is completely healed. Her soul, mind, is perfect, perfectly one with the Father. And that is the tender mercies. If you don't get it in this life, you'll get it in the life to come. Life is hard. Life is tough. And you're going to go through some trying times, no doubt about it. But what are you going to do with the time you have? I want those tender mercies. I want that loving kindness. I want that forgiveness that this chapter speaks of. But I, I want that. And I believe in it. It shows my true belief by keeping his commandments and remembering to do them. And because I do that, I know I'm in covenant with him. All right, we'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.